Welcome to Discretion Advise. I am Mark McDermott, joined by John Hill, who is currently getting dressed. He is backstage in Broadway. He's doing a quick change. Here he is. Good morning, John. Good morning, Mark. So nice to see you. I, I apologize for being late to our broadcast. You had to get the come out. Oh, well, yeah. You say, oh, like you did not just yes. say that off camera. <laughs> no, I, I was saying I would smell if I didn't shower at uh, the time I needed to shower. How sure. are you guys? I mean, I won't acknowledge Cameron. How are you, Mark? I'm fantastic. <laughs> Can I do How my skincare you? routine while we're greeting each other? Oh, well, I would not. I would expect nothing less. What What are you applying? Is that okay. spackle, lime wash? There you go. Yeah. Um. You know, we start with a with a mini spackle. We start with. <laughs> I've already put the lactic acid on, uh, and then oh, we good. go to kind of a mummification. I don't know, have you ever heard of? Uh, not rohypnol. What is the other? Embalming fluid. That's what we're going for now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Just a little bit of that on there yeah. will keep the skin tight and right. You look tan. Where have you been? No, that's just uh, hurry. That's just hurrying around. <laughs> well, happy Halloween. I love happy Halloween early time. Happy Halloween. And then happy this is a vitamin Halloween. C cream. Yeah, okay, what are you going to do for Halloween, Mark? Well, we, I already kind of celebrated it a little bit. I had a birthday party with my friend Catherine, who turned 30 on Friday the 13th. So we had a spooky little party. Um, it was my birthday on the 8th, to which Cameron did not wish me a happy birthday. Just want to put I that did. out there. John did, but Cameron did not, nor did anybody else from Naked Sword. So fuck off and join men.com. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> love you all. Um, and then I went to see Maluma on my birthday. Um, it was so great. We got to sit in like this little pit of like 20 people, like right up on the stage. He looked at me and grabbed his crotch. So that's all I ever wanted for my birthday. So that was that. Oh, I'm going to see um, Lauren Hill and the Fugees tonight. Like, oh my God, I so fucking lucky. love Lauren Hill. I cannot believe she's performing her one album. So my cooter is about to hit the floor tonight. How's your, how's your face regime? What's going on now? I love Lauren Hill so much. So while you were talking about that, I, uh, I applied my vitamin <laughs> C cream. Now I've moved on to a higher Lauronic uh, <clears throat> cream-based uh, tonic. You know, and so we're How really many layers are you putting on as a 46 year almost 46. I turned 46 on Monday. So ah. by this, by the time this comes out yesterday, yes, um, as a 46 year old now, man, I find it important to watch TikToks and relate to the 15 year old girls of America. And I found myself watching a TikTok in which a 15 year old girl did her entire skin routine. And I'm saying that sarcastically. I should. I have no business wasting my time with these little whores. But I found myself watching this little bitch. <laughs> and the title of the TikTok was, Get Ready With Me. When So uh, get ready with me. My dad's taking me to buy a Lamborghini. And this little cunt, I'm sorry, this little bit. I mean, this little lovely young lady um, <laughs> <laughs> said, Get ready with me. My dad's going to buy me a Lamborghini. We're going to Manhattan today. And she put about 500 layers of invisible serums on. And I thought, you know, I have like all this free shit that people have given me over the years. Um, my, my skin, of course, is naturally supple and it doesn't need literally any help. But I realized, <laughs> I realized that I have a bathroom full of shit I never use. And so I thought if this little girl, this little rich Lamborghini getting bitch is... um going to put all those serums on her face. I'll just do like the rich kids do. And um, so I just started putting like every product on. I was ma I was mo mostly just doing water and air, kind of like my diet. Mm -hmm. But I was yeah. just doing mostly like water and air uh, for skincare. But now after seeing what the TikTok kids are doing, I'm doing every product. So we're doing the kitchen sink facial. And I'm also doing a lot of water. Well, I'm happy to be a part of your Get Ready With Me, and I'm so glad our viewers got to see that as well. Coming up in the show, we have Darian Lake from RuPaul's Drag, Ra Drag Race. We have Landon Conrad. He's coming back, 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 back again into porn. And then later, Cameron's going to host a little uh, trivia to see who is smarter, me or John. And then we're going to close up with answering some fan questions. Those orders might not be correct, but just to let you know what's happening so you can get your good face on like John has john have you been watching real housewives of salt lake city i watched one episode you have to get into it they are having the seasons of all seasons you know i'm a fan of the housewives a connoisseur of sorts they're having one of the best housewife seasons of any franchise in a long time this quote alone from monica's mom 
just is 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 exemplary 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 blah, 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 of how just great it is quote lock your door if you're going to have 69 on the couch she says to her daughter it does, tv doesn't get better than that kids that that's all i need to get through my night so i definitely will be watching them. now thank you you need yes. to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bravoed out. I I might I might end up having to go to BravoCon as I suspected. Um, uh oh. But I, who knows? No. Do, Are you, what are you like doing? What's going on? What's happening? Don't know. But like it's been rumbled. Yeah. Who know? Who knows? Rumbled. Who knows? Rumbled. Rumbled. I wanted to I do don't a discount pod at at I know. that, but John said no. They don't like us there. So. I didn't say Apparently that. They just like John. I'm the problem. It's me, Taylor. Well, I didn't say that. I think people would love Discad Pod there. I don't know if traveling there. I don't know. I was saying like I won't. I wouldn't want to go unless I had to go for work. Like drumming up like twenty five thousand people. Vegas. You love Bravo and you love Vegas. So like, I think it would be I more don't enjoyable love Vegas. for you. You do like Vegas. I like going there to relax. <laughs> Which people don't understand. It sounds so stressful. So the opposite of relaxation to go and battle those crowds at BravoCon yeah, to then put that, up a show and worry about that seems so scary. But what's not scary is our live finale, November 10th here in New York City at Red yeah. Eye. Um, our tickets or we'll make an announcement soon. We have a very, very exciting guest. I know that we said we we're going to announce it on this episode. We can't just yet but stick around watch our socials we'll be announcing it soon it's going to be a fucking amazing show so mark that in your calendar november 10th live discat pod here in new york city at red eye i'm excited dot dot period dot what else has been going on john do you well, like haunted houses i love haunted houses do we think that this plant is dead because it used to be like this and now it's like this dead is it reaching for the sunlight or is it near a window good question i forget that plants need sun uh yeah there's sun <laughs> over there <laughs> honey um, i love sister i love haunted houses i mean the, the best haunted house going right now seems to be the taylor swift film at amc um by the looks of things <laughs> these little bastards are screaming they're dressing up they're shrieking blood curling uh, screams and they are throwing shit they are uh, attacking people um, in their seats. They're jump scares. So really, if you want the immersive experience of hell, go to AMC. Enjoy Taylor Swift eras. Mama, there must have been a glitch. He doesn't mean it. He loves her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I you, do, but it looks like a haunted that. house. <laughs> I do. Love um, it. I went to one last weekend, the Headless Horseman. I, I'm a screamer. Are you a screamer? No. Oh, see, I'm like loud screamer. I'm like extremely loud, like annoying, fun at first, but then shut the fuck up, screamer. I don't let the people um, have the satisfaction <laughs> of seeing any reaction. Yeah, I go in and I get psychological with it. I don't want them to think that it's working on me and fuck them for trying. And no, that's the whole them. point. Do you not dance at a concert? I don't really. What? I observe. I'm allowed if to be neurodivergent. I don't have to be the, the you same as everybody. If I was taking you tonight, you're not going to dance? You're just going to sit there and be like, oh, uh, that thing, that thing, that. Like, you're not, that actually you're not looks pretty nothing? accurate. Oh, my God. I cannot. I think you dance. I think you move your big ass. Oh, my God, John. That picture around. you sent me, I know it's not out yet. We probably can't talk about it. But that picture you sent me is the most beautiful picture I've ever seen. Which one? The one where you're, you're naked, my but you can't see anything. Is my ass visible? Uh, and your hole. <laughs> oh, you can see the teeth in my hole. <laughs> you can. You got new veneers, yeah. the bottom set down there. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Like I, I, do you, I know you have like some type of body dysmorphia, but you have to realize how fucking good you look in that picture. I'm just trying to celebrate my, my body in my life before it all starts to crumble. Because again, 46, this is the last time. That's why I'm bouncing my titties on TikTok. Are you Come turning 46 or are you turning 47 or 45? Tur I just turned 46. So Monday the 23rd is the Oh, well, this will on, be on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. So happy birthday, John. Cameron, if you fucking say happy birthday Thank to you. him, I will cut your ears off. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Don't you dare wish him a happy birthday on Monday. I'm going to be watching his phone. All right, let's move on to thought topics. Okay, that's over. 
What's in the news, handsome? Um, I am going to tell you in one second. <laughs> there is so much in the news. Actually, that's the thing. To actually, the big, actually. Whoo, girl, there is so girl. much happening in the news. It's so funny how email works. Ah, here it is. Just showing up. There it is. Always prepared. Just like Dan Rather. Actually, yeah. Uh, we A little bit about Britney. You know, Michelle Williams is going to narrate her book. Uh, there was the abortion bombshell. Michelle her Williams, Chamberlain. Destiny's Child, or Michelle Williams, Keith, Heath Ledger? Second option, B. Yes, correct. Uh, and, I mean, it's that whole machine of when a book comes out. You know, these things, are, they pull out a lot of things to make you want to buy the book. It's like Jada Pinkett Smith. You start to say, why are we hearing so much? But they're trying to sell a book. You know, Brittany, everything that comes out is... You know, on two things happen at once. Anytime I hear Britney news, it's, oh God, I hope she's okay. How wrong we've done her. And I want her to be at peace. So it's like, do you fuel the conversation further by picking it all apart? Yes, that's or, what she wants. She's releasing a memoir so that she yeah, can hear know. her side of the story. We've entertained the other side for so long. We yeah. should entertain her side for a little bit. I mean, she says that Justin Timberlake cheated on her with a celebrity. I've been I, I was searching around the Twitter, the X, and it seems to be that it's Jenna Dewan that supposedly, allegedly, Justin cheated with, and she mm. revealed that she had an abortion with Justin. If you go back and watch the Every Time video, it's like this dichotomy of her going to the hospital while this baby is born. So it kind of has a, a hidden meaning now that you know the truth about that song, which makes it a sad song even more sad. So yeah, I think we should entertain Britney's side of it since we entertained the other for so fucking long. You're right. It's good that she's getting her side out. Oh, my dog's growling. Is he throwing up again? Uh, he has been throwing up lately, but it's mostly green foam. Uh, maybe there's that, a, that, maybe that plant has something to do with it. Is he eating that plant? No, it's. Too, I see your um, eyes looking and, and trying to calculate like he that. He can't meme get up there. Them. Yeah. <laughs> hope not. I think it's just that he's in a new place, um, in a new apartment, uh, and old. We're both old now at this point. Sometimes you barf green foam out of your teeth that has your butt that has teeth in it. There is a new study that says that for more pleasurable sex, eat first. So that begs the question, do you eat before sex or not? Are they taking anal into account with this study? Because, like, if you have a meatloaf, it's not going to come out your pussy. But if you're having anal, you might get a whoopsie doopsie. It's not about, I think, the functioning of the like the holes necessarily. It's more about the sensation and thing. you have the energy to... Um, feel things like a soft caress doesn't feel as satisfying if you're starving but if you're full your your body has the capacity to feel sensual pleasure um more which would make sense it would make sense but i just don't think gay people were taken into account of this because i don't really want to eat an ass after a meal because scat's got your tongue and i don't want to go there what else you got women prefer flings not marriage with more muscular men so muscles equal a fling. I guess. Oh my God, so are you just a boy toy now? It would be marriage. Well, women. So I think maybe. Randy. Maybe are you discounting Randy, your ex girlfriend? Uh, well, that I was a fling to her, so that would hold true to this study. Do you, for you, when you seek out a partner, how, what body type, and does that change from a hookup to a relationship? I think it does. Not, not necessarily. I mean, I think this. I like the same things, and I would want it all the time with a monogamous partner. You know. I think maybe I like a little extra. A little extra what? Like body fat or like mass? Like I don't. I don't. I For don't which, necessarily want to be out. Uh, both. Like I don't yeah. like such hard things. Such hard right. things aren't fun to like hold right. on to and like squeeze yeah. up against if it's so hard i'm not gonna cuddle a rock yeah but i'll cuddle a pillow right yeah same i would agree to that 
I would I would be on the same page. Um, I was getting the finger from Cameron. Is that a wrap up now or wrap up after the Winnie the Pooh story? After this one. Okay, great. I'm getting that cue from you. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Honey and Blood, a new film that was shown to fourth graders at Miami Springs Charter School. This film was a number one box office hit in Mexico. Um, it came through the U.S. I almost watched it a couple times but didn't have the time for all of that. Um, now. Easy mistake to make. It's a horror movie. It's like Jane Austen zombies, you know, that type of thing. Now, is Winnie the Pooh, Honey and Blood related to the story earlier about eating before sex, or is this something hey. separate? Hey, yo. Um, I have not seen it, but I do want to ask you something because you are always up to date on what to watch. I have having a really hard time finding like something scary to watch because, you know, this type of year, time of year, you like watching scary things, and I've kind of had a lot of misses. I watched John Carpenter's Suburban Screams, the first couple episodes. It's mm. not great on Peacock. Did you watch House of Usher? No, is that good? Watch that. That's fun. Okay. I watched Talk to Me, which got great reviews, and I was like, this is sucks. Yeah. I don't you, like supernatural know, stuff. I like things that could be real. You know what's a great movie that holds up that not a lot of people saw was The Crazies? Not The Strangers, which is also <gasps> the, the best. The Crazies is so the good. Is a great movie. People should revisit that. The Crazies is very terrifying. That moment so when they're scary. in like the, well, they're in a lot of it in like this hospital or like, mm -hmm. what is it? It's not a hospital. It's like a sanctuary it's, of sorts. Yeah. I think it's, I think you're thinking like when they're all kind of like a makeshift yes. ICU type of situation or more. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so The good. Strangers is coming out with like a trilogy, which I'm super excited about because I love The Strangers. Yeah. I love. <sighs> good for that. All right. So I'm coming gonna be up, camera we have for their... Halloween. Are you really? Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Pokemon. Here is. Crossbody. Little uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and some Sonic. Uh-huh. Oh, Cameron. All right. We'll be right back with Darian Lake and Landon Conrad. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Hi, Mark. Hi, John. Where am I? Who's here? We have the one, the only, Darian Lake from RuPaul's Drag Race, and we have Hi. the man of your dreams from all the porn you've jerked off to, Landon Conrad. Hi, guys. Hey, what's Hello. up? Hi. Okay, wait. So let me, I just need to catch myself because I said hi, guys, and I got in trouble last time I said hi, guys. Am I allowed to say hi, guys? Or need yeah, to stop sure. That? Okay. Um, I'm a Gen Xer, so you could say anything really to me. Actually, I, I was, uh, you know bullied a lot like so you could really say anything to me and it doesn't fucking affect me so <laughs> suck my dick I don't bully you, bully you, so. <laughs> like i was oh, bullied perfect. relentless in school um i was homeschooled so <laughs> <laughs> where did you grow up darian i grew up on long island until i was 11 and then uh we moved up to rochester new york so i've been there ever since is that where mm -hmm. you started drag in rochester yeah, I started drag in Rochester. Um, I started like at the end of high school, and then um, then I was getting into it a lot. The summer after high school, I was going to Rocky Horror Picture Show a lot, and then uh, in the fall after that, my mom found my bag of drag and kicked me out of the house. I was like, bye. Um, you now, know, I'm not paying money for some faggot to live in my house and all that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> very religious family. Me too. How was that for you? Like how? Did you cope with that? And did you still do drag? Was did you turn and lean into well, it more because of that? Yeah, because I mean that's all that was gonna like pay me and feed me and stuff. And uh, you know, it was it was crazy because like I remember I was sitting in my car crying my eyelashes off, and then I was you know considering suicide and all that stuff because I felt like I have nothing. I'm a gay, what I think unattractive, chubby fat boy. You know who? I mean. I didn't know of the chub chasers back then or people who thought that was cute. And so I just thought like my life was <laughs> over and I was peeling the glue off the lashes because I had to save them because, you know, I'm not just going to throw them away. And I thought that was a lot like my life. I was like, I can't just, you know, kill myself. Like I have to pull off the glue and, and reuse this, whatever I have to, to keep going. So you know, there's there's many times where I've struggled with the whole mental part of it all. So mm. it's it's been a lot. It's been a learning experience. But then I, you know, I know that um, you never know what's going to be around the corner. 
Well, thank you for being such a warrior because you're an inspiration to a lot of the up and comers and you're thank so you. fucking funny. So tr I think that humor comes out of trauma. So although oh, yeah. it was probably really hard to live <laughs> through, it certainly made you a fucking star. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I find my, my funniest moments in some of my saddest stories, but yeah. um, you can't laugh at the same joke all the time. So why cry about the same problem all the time? You know, you got to mope or move I on. I find a way. I cry about the <laughs> same yeah. shit. Well, well, if you now, need Landon, a when soft did... bosom. <laughs> Speaking of a soft bosom, mm. Landon, when did you get started in your porn career? Uh, it was actually 2000, the end of 2009. So it's been quite a while. Um, and, After you uh, filmed your first scene and mm -hmm. like before it came out, did you have nerves or were you excited? How was that like moment that you filmed it to it being released? Like, were you just going nuts? I was freaking out. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how people were going to um, take it. Um, but for the most part, everyone was pretty cool with it, surprisingly. And um, it's turned out to be a great thing for me. So I'm happy. Did with you it. grow up in a conservative household like Darian? What was your growing up like? Yeah, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I'm a nice Mormon boy. But um, my family wasn't really religious. We were kind of like Sunday Mormons. We'd go to church, usually late. And, um, you know, we would sometimes pray at dinner, but that was pretty much the extent of it. My parents were always pretty open-minded and pretty liberal, so they didn't really push the Mormon thing on me too much. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you've taken a bit of a break and now you've gotten back into the gig. What prompted this break and what brought you back? Um, I think honestly, it's just been people asking for me to do it. Like I still like get people coming up to me at Starbucks and the store and like, when are you going to film again? When are you going to do OnlyFans? And so it's been kind of in the back of my mind. And so finally I'm like, why not? You know, like, I look a little bit different than when I first came out. Um, you know, I'm more of a daddy now. I'm definitely embracing that. I'm in better shape now. I think I physically look better. So, you know, why not? Why not come out and capitalize on on everything now, like with the OnlyFans and, and uh, just have fun with it. So, yeah, your dreams have no expiration date, you know? So you keep going <laughs> for you too, Darren, you took a, you took a I bit know. of a break from drag race from yeah. season six, where you were obviously top four with the door, Bianca and Courtney, yeah. it took until all stars eight to get you back. Were there, did they approach you in between there or what, what took there so were, long yeah. for you to do it? Yeah, I was asked. Um, and there was certain th like I was an alternate for all stars three. And so, um, there was a lot of it, but then there was the um, emotional highs and lows that I was going through personally and stuff that, you know, um, I got to a point where like I was putting on so much weight and stuff and like I was like 60 pounds Darian heavier Cake. than I was on the show. Yeah, exactly. Darian Cake. Uh, she had the diabetes. <laughs> no, um, actually, I luckily I didn't get the diabetes or whatever. And now when I go to the doctor, I'm like, are you sure I'm not pre-diabetic? He's like, no. I'm like, so I can't get the Ozempic? He's yeah. like, no. I'm like, I'll go to Dunkin' Donuts, get my blood work done, and I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> so I got to pay full price, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not that kind of rich. So I didn't win the fame games <laughs> either. <sighs> so, um, but and do yeah, people like come I, up to you at Starbucks? Do people come up to you and say shit? They do. They do. What do yeah, they say? All the time. Um, usually they're like, oh my God, I'm excited to meet you. Or are you Darian Lake? And I say, no, I'm Latrice Royale. I just wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> and um, they're like, wait. <laughs> what um and so you know i just um but yeah like all the time everywhere i'm really recognizable i guess for some reason and um that's so pretty and yeah i get i get recognized a lot a lot of times on planes and all that stuff or whatever um so it's it's fun it's it's weird it's um and then you know just the other day we were at a restaurant and and of course the bill comes and then they're like oh by the way i know who you are i'm like now i got a tip more uh -huh. than 20 percent <laughs> um, so like that cheap ass bitch um so yeah i, actually, I hate whenever tipping. somebody yeah well i know whenever somebody tips me like two dollar bills um 
I save them and then I tip like my Starbucks people with $2 bills. So they're probably like, here comes grandpa with his $2 bills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my grandkids love them. But for some reason, I like to I don't know, enjoy something that's queer and a little bit odd, you know, that they don't see all the time. So uh, now you but two yeah, have, yeah, you two have something in common. You both worked with Bianca. Yes. Landon, you were in Kings of New York season one uh, with Bianca doing a cameo in that porn. It was filmed right after Drag Race, but before it aired. Your partner was Jesse Aris in that. Did did you guys have a little romance behind the scenes? Like you guys seem to have had a connection. Oh, uh, we did. We did. We uh, we got um, the production crew got stuck up in Toronto, I think, for Pride, and so Jesse and I were at the hotel there uh, on Fire Island. I forget the name of it, but we were there all by ourselves for a couple of days. And we just basically were running around naked and having sex the whole entire time. And uh, it now, was pretty, it was pretty good. <laughs> did Bianca join in at all? She, uh, no, did she that, didn't. Did... <laughs> oh, come on. All right, Darian, Mary, fuck. Oh. <laughs> she could have. Come well, on, he, Bianca. Come, come on, Bianca. lazy come big dick bitch. <laughs> no, come on, come on her. Like literally on her chest, on her face, anything that's, to watch that's that her. hideous makeup off. <laughs> I didn't fuck know she Mary had a big kill. Dick. Bianca adore. I've been Courtney. more into it. <laughs> no, oh, he does. He does have a, a quite a large dick. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well then, in that case, um... <laughs> he should have invited him. <laughs> I know. <His> number. <laughs> I'll I'll, um, I'll text you it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so fuck, fuck Mary, Mary kill, kill Bianca, adore Courtney. Kill myself so I don't have to fuck Courtney, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> ah, uh, I just actually met with my um, financial advisor Smith and Wesson. I'm just gonna blow my uh. fucking brains out. Um, no, um, <laughs> so they're a great firm. Um, no, uh, I honestly probably in that group. Um, it's so hard to really. Uh, I mean, who's going to treat me the best um, for marriage? I don't know. Yeah, there's something about like Courtney's, um, the way that she's such a spiritual guider. I think I'd want her around a long time to help me with that. Um, Bianca's so close to death anyway, so it wouldn't be so bad if I killed kill her. Kill her. Just um, kill her. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You know, and, um, and then I guess I'm going to fuck a door and work. Fuck a door. Again, Oh, Dare, a door. A, a, fuck a door. Well, I probably, yeah, fuck a door. No. Um, oh, wait a second. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that, so that, I guess that makes me pansexual now because a door is a beautiful woman now. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's always been. Yeah. So, so I guess I'm coming out. Landon, are you pan? You ever, you ever uh, get with a, a woman? Or a drag queen or a trans? I, or I a mean, trans. I have not, but I have noticed, like, I was watching some porn recently and, um, there were some trans men in it, and mm. I um, I enjoyed watching it. So, <laughs> how about like a like a chubby drag queen? You ever have a... who's not Onozempic? Yeah, I'm down. Uh, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> All right, Woo-hoo. perfect. I'll introduce you to Latrice. She got a lot of two dollar bills. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have you found that your sexuality has changed or evolved as, you, as you've gotten older? But for um, me, yeah. Both. <laughs> I mean, mine definitely has. Like, I'm I'm a lot more... I'm into, like, everything now. Like, not just sexually, just, like, people in general. I have pretty eclectic taste. And I think when I was younger, I was a little more into what I thought was attractive then. And now, I, I guess I see <laughs> beauty in everyone. So, um, yeah. I have a lot more... Um, Can I ask you to do something that that I know Cameron is like itching for me to ask you? You have been off the camera for a long time, Landon. Can we see what everything looks like in 2023? You said you're AKA, in better can, shape now. I don't can know you how take, that's Can you take your blouse off? I mean, off. yeah, you can as, as soon as, as, soon as um, our scene comes out, my new scene. There, yeah. Oh, come on. He, a little preview. Find it at nakedsword.com. Sorry, Cameron. I did try. Here's something else. As that soon as your credit card goes through, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take my The check off. clears. <laughs> yeah. 
how did you film the fan Cash games, out. Darian? Like, what how was the process to that? Because it seems like you guys did all your runways, all those looks, all those voiceovers. Were you just there locked in that studio for 24 hours? Or how did you film that? Um, gosh, I, I don't remember. Um, we, <laughs> we, get, we get time to, to film it and all that stuff or whatever. And so um, you are there, you know, a little bit. And so, yeah, it depends on, like, their filming schedule and all that stuff or whatever. I'm really quick, so... You know, probably took me like a couple of minutes, hours, whatever. Um, I'm a quick change artist. All that bullying in gym class taught me how to change my clothes really fast. <laughs> so you did do it all in one day? Like you just had to keep um, changing makeup and wig and outfits? And then um, walk again and walk again? I think we had we had the time if we needed the time and all that stuff. So they would have to schedule it. So it was really up to them how they wanted to do it. And each girl, you know, because some girls had more looks than others. So it really depends on, on did, what their filming schedule was. So Did you leave yeah. All Stars 8 with a bad feeling in your mouth? Me as a viewer did for you because I really feel that you were judged unfairly, especially in that when you were in the bottom for like that looks episode, I thought yeah. for sure you had won that episode. And the fact that you were in the bottom, I was shook and shocked <laughs> and gooped and gagged. Yeah. Well, the funny thing I thought was... Um, the first untucked when we went backstage all the girls who were in the untucked who did not hear the the audience or the the judges critiques they were like okay so darian's in the top and blah 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 is in the bottom or whatever and then i was like no i'm actually in the bottom they were like what like a lot of you know, a lot of the other girls thought that too but you know it's rupaul's drag race not darian's drag race so yeah um, yeah 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 so um, do you actually tuck your dick you know, <laughs> what do you want to see? Uh, I'm tucked right now. I just go and then just suck it in. <laughs> yeah, I tuck it under my fat apron. So no, um, yes, I did. Well, uh, not when I'm. I've tried. Sex. I can't tuck my actual dick. Yeah. No. No. Sure. None of those not pictures you sent me. It was tucked. Girl, mm. no, it's yeah. not. I don't. Shit. I don't have the length yeah. for that. I don't have the length and, and for the also, hole. Yeah. Yeah, the girth is the problem, um, but yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's yeah. that. All right, you guys ready for game time? Ooh, We're gonna play yeah. a little game, I just born talked. or drag. I'm going to name a name. You're gonna tell me whether it's a real life porn star's name or a drag queen name. All three of you are playing. All right, number one, Teen La Teen Laquifa, porn or drag? Dairy. Drag. Ooh. Porn. I think that's drag. Yeah. Okay, porn, porn, drag. It is porn. Teen Laquifa is a legit female porn star. All right, number two, Izzy Uncut. Izzy Uncut. Drag. Porn. porn. That sounds like a drag king. Yeah. All right, you're clo John and Darian are right. It is a drag. She is from New York City. Izzy Uncut. All right. <laughs> number three, Vagelina Holy. Porn. Porn. Um, I'm thinking because it's like Jolie, so I'm going to say drag. Vagelina Holy is a porn star. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Check her out. <laughs> All right, four more. Jenny Talia. Jenny Talia. Well, that's got to be a drag queen. Drag, 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 drag. Okay, this is a trick question because I found both. It is a porn star, but it is also a drag queen from Canada. So Jenny Talia is popular amongst them both. She can do it all. She's a regular oh. Liam Riley. All right. Tara Hyman. Tara Hyman. That's a drag porn, queen. Drag, porn. Drag. Porn, drag, drag. It is drag. And she's also from New York City. Tara Hyman. Ooh. Please welcome to the stage. Tara Hyman. All right. Two more. <laughs> okay. Tasha Salad. Drag. We know drag. that. Drag. We know she her. That's right. She is drag and she's from Chicago, bitch. Last what? one, Dixie Normus. Porn. porn. Dixie um, Normus is porn. I, I'm going to say drag again. I just. That's it. it is drag, <laughs> but like the location is what's shocking to me. She's from the UK. Dixie Normus oh. sounds like a very American name. I thought of a good drag queen this uh, morning as I was arising from my slumber, realizing it's almost Halloween. Kat Acombs. 
<laughs> Catacombs, please welcome to the no, stage. Catacombs. Sorry, it didn't really land. <laughs> Damn, right. She's underground. I'd like She's to see her bones. Skulls, <laughs> dungeon, you know, dungeons, cobwebs, twat, you know. Dungeons and drag queens, yeah. And where can we find your cobwebs and twat, Darren? What's our, what are your socials? Oh, mm-hmm. my, um, I'm Miss Lake on TikTok. And um, <laughs> let's see. Um, what else? Uh, just Darian Lake on Instagram and X and um, uh, um, Facebook for the old folk. Whoa. <laughs> What's your MySpace, babe? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I made sure to delete all that and all the problematic posts from the past. Oh, shit. And Landon, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, Landon Conrad. And then on Instagram, it's Brandon Landon LA. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll be right back answering fan questions. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Y'all. Thanks. See, you did it too. Guys, y'all, it's fine. We got permission. It's gender neutral. Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I am still Mark McNamara. And he's still John Arthur Hill. We have dug into the vaults, or Cameron did, and found some fan questions. John, are you ready for this? Yes. Can't wait. Okay. Josie asks, Mark, Mark mentioned his dad's website in an earlier podcast. However, oh God. However, when I Google Captain Anthony, I get stonecrabstore.com. Is this correct website? I'm not finding any smoke mullet. Is it a seasonal product? Wow. Um... My dad doesn't probably even know I mentioned this. But yes, that is the correct website. They ship stone crabs nationwide, and it is stone crab season starting October 5th. So they are fresh and ready. Uh, You can't really ship smoked mullet. I don't know how fresh that would be uh, because it's like cooked and you have to ship it. So yeah. So if you're going to go on the website, it's for stone crabs only. And that's the correct one. Thank you, Josie, for your interest. Fascinating. The fish... Empire. Honey, the fish empire. Uh, This is a question from Albert. Uh, How far, I love this question. This is actually a highly nuanced question. Uh, It reads, how far can you shoot your load? So. Oh. Yes. Um, Nobel Prize for journalism, that question. Do you want to go first, John? You want to shoot your load first? (laughs) Sure. Uh, Nanya, as in business. (laughs) Oh. I would love to sit, stand side by side with you and see who shoots farther. Yeah. Uh, I'd be into that. Maybe at the live show, November 10th. Right. So stick around, show up, Albert, for that, and we'll see who goes further. Yeah. Uh, Brett asks, what's the biggest ick at the moment? I'll go. Yeah. Um, people posting insane shit about the Middle East conflict. Um, on Instagram and social media. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden we have degrees in political science, so I'm not an expert, so I am staying away from it. I think that yeah. is the smart thing to do and leave it to the experts, and I will support. People are looking needs to be so supported. insane posting certain well, stuff. Well, I mean, I think but they want to yeah, be active. We don't want to be silent. We want to do the right thing. But I think it's a this is a new this is a new territory we're all in, and I think it's time to like get real, get educated, listen, observe, and don't get reactive. You know, that's the stage I'm in. I'm in the discovery stage of listening and learning Smart. and not enjoying uh, all the innocent people being killed. So that's that's where we stand. My ick is very similar to that. It's Naked Attraction. I just now started watching it. And for a show that like showcases naked people, it's incredibly uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> and this is coming from a porn director. It is like very subjective and like very i don't know like it's too mean like it's too mean to the people and some of them i've like have big balls but not literally to come on there and show their nasty ass cooters that are like very outy or their balls that are very inny so it it's a icky 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 for me that's a good one andrew Uh, asks when can you get meredith on the podcast Mm. Um, it's, it's hard. You guys have to understand that there are a lot of rules with the people who are currently on a season. You, they can't necessarily talk to everyone. Um, I've still remained close to Meredith after our fire Island bit. She texted me the other day, some stuff about, uh, uh, Angie, um, which by the way, 
And she's so upset about her husband's gay rumor, but had no problems last season spreading a gay rumor about Jen Shaw. So, like, calm down, lady. Although I don't really like the whole your husband's gay moment, but, like, shut up. You did it to someone else last season. So, I don't know. We're going to get her on as soon as she's allowed. She would love to come on. She's a lovely gal. I'd love to get her and Seth together because now they have a podcast. So, that's where we stand on that. We'll try as soon as we can. Uh, Next question, Daniel is the uh, person who sent it in. What is a reality franchise or show that you can't stand? Summer Most. House. I've never seen it. Me neither. And I won't. When it says Summer House coming up next, nope. It's hmm. it's not for me. My thing is usually, um, I guess it's, well, I guess the question is reality franchise. Most of them I can't stand. <laughs> Well, you've worked in it for so long, so you probably, for you, it's like a different story. You, yeah. You've seen how the sausage is made, so you don't really want to eat it. I re- I, my favorite thing to watch reality-wise is a reunion. Not even watching the whole season, but I love a reunion. I just like to jump in for those, and then I get really into it. But it's such a commitment, and I, I like my evenings free. But I like, yeah, well, so most of them. Maybe Kardashians? I don't, I'm not watching it. I've never, I've never seen a Kardashian episode either. That's something yeah. else that, like... Not for me, but it is for a lot of people. All right. Here's one for both. You go ahead. Okay. This is for both of us from Eugene. To both of you, if you're friends slash colleagues with the porn star, do you still wank to the porn they act in? I think it's a case-by-case basis, actually. I I think on the the whole, no. Usually. on the whole. On the whole, yeah. (laughs) Not usually. I don't. I can't. Some, can't. I can't. I can't watch porn. I know. I, this is the same thing with reality TV. I know too much about it. It's why I don't yeah. eat seafood because I grew up around it. My dad's a fisherman. I can't get into it. I make porn. I can't watch it too. You have to separate your personal life from what you make money in. So no, I'm not wanking to porn anyways. I wank to John's pictures that he sends me. There we go. Uh, this one's from Kyle, Kyle. asks. Go for it. Uh, this question is for both of you. Do you have... Any advice for a young gay moving to New York City, going out, dating, adapting to the city? I'm moving next month and would love any advice you guys have. Love you both so much. Stay away from Cameron. That's my Stay advice. Stay away from Cameron. Cameron's in New York now, so be careful. Daryl Ornhart on the roads. I say follow your passions. Like, what do you actually yeah. enjoy doing? Whether it's Broadway, whether it's Bravo stuff, whether it's sports. Like, go out to those events and meet like-minded people because... Right having going to a bar and like drinking alcohol is not enough to have in common so like go and do the activities that you like to do and meet the people who have the same interests as you but like a note new yorkers are very hard to crack we we just are but once you once you do it's worth it so be patient and go do the things with people who what that you like to do don't just go to a bar don't just go to a club like go find the things that you enjoy and you'll meet people that you'll love to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had something amazing, some amazing advice. <laughs> Just waste no time. Don't be afraid of anything. Go if you're embarrassed or like scared to fail, like fail fast and hard and quickly and and just get in the mix as, as soon as possible. Like time's ticking and like everybody is trying to figure out at the same time. You know, no one knows the answers. Everyone's just trying the best they can, shooting in the dark. So just, like, get on out there. Get on that. Richard asks, what's the best lotion to moisturize your hole? Mm. Got chapped lips, Richard? I would say vitamin mm. E oil. It's it's natural. Find an organic vitamin E oil and just rub that on you. Yeah, I think just to, just whatever you're moisturizing yourself with, just... Slap a little down there too, but I don't really moisturize my hole. I mean, I don't. No, I've never really moisturized. Well, like if I'm putting lotion on my butt, sometimes they'll give it a little side swipe. Yeah. The camera's giving us the finger now. I don't know if he's just like suggesting something or if he's saying time is up. But there seems to be vitamin E on his finger. Uh, Lindsay says, "What is John's least favorite Broadway show?" Hmm. Lion King. A same like reality show. <laughs> What'd you say? Lion King. I fucking hated Lion King. Oh, I like Lion King. Maybe like 20 years ago, but now they just like drag their costumes around. They've gotten tired. 
Okay. That, I mean, I, the thing is, I'm not the biggest Broadway queen. Like, I'm not like, oh my God, let me tell you about this show and that show. Like, it was how I made my living and I was, I, like, I, but it, I, I'm not like sitting at home, like pouring over cast recordings being like, y'all probably, probably, probably like talking about it. It's like actually horrendously irritating to me when, oh my God. Uh, you never talk about Broadway. I just now realized that. Like you, When I was in high school, I was into about it. Broadway, but I'm not like a Broadway fanatic at all. Um, sorry, Lindsay. And I like more things than I, and I'm, I'm pretty forgiving. I'm like, wow, you did a show. That's actually like really impressive. I think it's really hard to do one. So I'm not like, oh my God, that sucks because of this, 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 and like tearing things apart. I'm kind of like, wow, I'm impressed. Anything ever gets on stage. I'm more like into it, you know? Um, but one more thing, I know we have to go, but, uh, there's a question from Mark up in here. Oh, it was just unhighlighted. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, what did you? What does Mark think of the rumors? The new Scream movie is going to be set around Christmas. This I know you're going to be upset with this, John, because you didn't like my opinion last time. But this just falls into my well, I like Chris Landon. nightmare that Chris Landon is going to make a gimmicky like his other movies. Like Christmas is a gimmick, and now we're going to bring that into the Scream franchise, which is usually a little sharper than using like a holiday as a gimmick to go around. So. TBD. Let I'm gonna go into it with an open mind and let's see. But it, that doesn't sound great. Yes. But Karen. what does sound great? We'll be right back. No, with, no. What? What the fuck? I want to. I want to ask Mark a question about Scream. He okay, got me go into the Scream it. movies. So Do what it. if? What if the movie, the new Scream, is about gimmicky horror films? And it's well, they. That's what they have been from the beginning. It is like a well, but like what if? On what if he's satirizing films. himself? Yeah. I'm not interested in him in him enough to watch I, that. But he's a I am such a big Chris Landon fan. I really genuinely Okay, convince me. What are some of his movies? Um You're Didn't he make fan. Freaky? Did not great. Not, not a good movie. Not a good movie. Okay. Too goofy. They're goofy movies. Ah. Which they're entertaining. Happy Death Day is entertaining, but it's a goofy movie scream is sharper it's not goofy i love okay. goofy i love goofy so much that's why we love cameron little goon but it's just i don't know give him Watch. an he's opportunity gonna, to surprise exactly. you that would he's be gonna my blow our socks off and i'm gonna come on here and like suck his dick off on camera because i'll be so happy with that he'd made this holiday slasher movie you never know but TBD. So let's let's sit back and watch. I'm going to go. I'm going to go opening night, no matter if I'm in the hospital or not. We saw that with Scream Six, but um, it's it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is we have to go, and we'll be right back. We're, what are we doing next? Trivia. Oh, mm. we're gonna find out who's smarter, me or John. We'll be right back. Hint: It's John. Welcome back. We're going to play some trivia now. Cameron's going to join us and administer these questions. Cameron, we're going to follow your lead. Let's do it. Hi. Um, these are just going to be like little trivia questions. We're going to be asking you guys individually and all that. Are you smarter than a serious XM host or porn director or whatever we're calling this segment? I don't know. Um, who wants to go first? You're I'll the go. host, Alec. Oh. oh, okay. Didn't he die? Well, you will too if you don't hurry up. Okay. Um... <laughs> Um, John, what type of fish is Nemo from Fighting Nemo? Oh, uh, I do know that. It has like a normal name, you know, like uh, clownfish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark, what is the only continent without spiders? I know. I Antarctica. Know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slay. Slay. John, what are the four colors found in a traditional pack of Starbursts? Pink, orange, red, yellow. Pink, yellow. Slay. Yeah. Orange, Stop right there. Red. You okay. got it, Queen. Yeah, yeah, that's four, Mama. Honey, she got that Starburst. Uh, <laughs> Mark, which food group is on the bottom of the original food pyramid? Like bread and grains and shit. Yeah. Mm hmm. Grains. Word. Uh, Why they got to be the bottom? Honey, grain it on that wood. John, how many grams of protein are in a chocolate chip cookie dough Quest bar? <laughs> 20. 
It's 21. 21. Wow. Some of, some of them are 20, some are 21. Chill if you would have asked me the birthday cake, which is the one that my cock was molded after, it would be 20. But go ahead. <laughs> Blow out that candle. Mark, how many Empanada Mama locations are in New York City? Okay, this is a trick question because they just yeah. opened a third one, and I don't know if that's on your list. How many are you saying? I'm going Three. off of what's on their website. There's four... There's a fourth one? Lower East Side, Times Square, East Village, Hell's Kitchen. Mm. That Didn't you just name three? No. Wow, Mark, you're so Lower side, stupid. Time, Lower East Side. <laughs> Times Square. Times Square. East, East Village. Hell's Kitchen. There's an East Village and a Lower East Side? Honey, I think that's uh, the same thing. On their website, it says we are in four spots in New York City, and then it gets Work. four different okay. addresses. Okay, hey. Happily wrong, then. I did the research. You did, honey. They just opened the Times Square one. Mm. Uh, John, how many centimeters are in eight inches? Don't know. Twelve. Twenty. Yeah, no idea. Mm. I don't do that shit. Uh, Mark, (laughs) in an alphabetical list of U.S. states, what state comes last? Wyoming. Correct. Trust. Work. That was quick, too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, all right, four more questions. John, how many currently airing Housewife franchises take place on the East Coast? Two. Oh, wait, does Miami count? Yeah, that is the Potomac, East Coast. is Atlanta the four. East Coast? Yeah. Oh, then four, yeah. Atlanta? Oh, yeah, Atlanta is the East Coast, I guess. M- Miami, Atlanta, Potomac, New York. New Jersey. And oh, New is Jersey. that currently airing? Well, I meant, like, not canceled. Uh, oh, oh, no I'm DC, sorry. no DC. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not counting DC. Uh, okay, sorry, that was close. That was close. Mark. That was given. That's all good. It's all good. Um, Mark, name five countries that have their own official franchise of RuPaul's Drag Race. The Philippines, France, Italy, Brazil, Mexico. Slay. There's like 500 of them. So there's a, there, yeah, there's a bunch more. But I got five. <laughs> um. John, what is the name of the last queen of France? The last one? Antoinette? Yeah. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. John. That did away uh, with the Antoinette. fucking royalty, bitch. Mark, how many continents are there? Okay. Well, you have like North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa and Antarctica. They just Seven. discovered an eighth, and it's under New Zealand. But that's a new thing. Well, New Zealand I have and seven, then the new, so new you girl. <laughs> yeah, it's under New Zealand, and, and New Zealand is like the poking out part. Word. And John, what year did the what year did the Titanic sink? Like fucking nineteen forty to thirty nine. <laughs> 1912. What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know history. I don't know and, inches. And, jo- and Mark, last question. What year did the movie Titanic come out? 97. <laughs> I think you could be right. Is it 97? He's, he's correct, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sorry right, to jump on it. that one, but... That, so I, I love trivia. I did not keep score. Um, oh my god, we showed up to our job and you didn't keep score. Alec, this is why you're no longer... Do I have time to unleash a fucking stream of piss? Oh, my God. Well, that's the end of the show. So absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to watch John Pissing on our full podcast at YouTube.com and our official merch. We have clothing. We have hats. We have mugs. Head over to discadpod.com. It's in the little sc- scroll down menu. So if you hit the little scroll, scroll down menu, it says merch. It's not an easy link on our Discad Pod site. Maybe Cameron can change that. But you have to scroll down to where it says merch to get to it. And make sure you're following us on all the socials at Discad Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. John, go enjoy your piss. And we will see you, you November 10th for our live show. Bye, guys. Bye.